All right. As you know, Task Force Mali was established following the death of who we now believe to be a little girl at Wanaka, on a, and whose body was found on about the 14th of this month. There's 15 investigators in the core group of the task force, and we're being assisted by Forensic Science SA and our Forensic Services branch, who all have got a significant commitment in their specialist areas. We've also had um, strong support from detectives across the state. Um, the volume of calls coming in is such that we are being assisted in our investigations by detectives from various branches throughout South Australia. We've had very strong support um, from the media, and we thank you for that. Volunteers, the business community, government agencies, and members of the public. And as a result, we're continuing to get positive lines of inquiry on a daily basis. In relation to the forensic testing, I can say that unfortunately we do, do not have a definite gender from a forensic point of view, and we do not yet have a DNA profile. The degradation of the skeletal remains and other complicating factors have made this task more difficult than first anticipated, but I'm very confident with the work that they're doing that there is a very good likelihood we will get that information. So in terms of gender, race and the DNA profile, we're still working towards that. We've had 223 Crime Stopper calls to date. The Crime Stopper calls have come from right across Australia. Um, some of those, um, the information contained in those has been able to be quickly eliminated and we have a large amount that we're still working on. So far, we've eliminated from the investigation 24 potential victims who have been identified either by government agencies as being people that we should perhaps look at um, or from Crime Stoppers or from members of the public contacting Police Direct. And we've eliminated from the investigation several people who were nominated as persons of interest that we should have a look at. And we've been able to confirm that those people are not in any way connected with the investigation. Some aspects of the investigation we clearly can't talk about and we won't tell you about, but as much as we can, we're happy to tell you so that what you're actually reporting is factual. And there'll be a delay sometimes in what we can say, um, but the reason for that is we don't want any misinformation to come out because it will be detrimental to the investigation and it might make people discount uh, something they would otherwise ring up about. We've had contact with the missing person sections across Australia and all of the homicide squads across the country. There are no missing people nationally that we have a strong focus on, um, but there are some that we are still working to eliminate 100% from the inquiry. In relation to the victim, I can tell you that the victim is most likely a little girl, uh, two to four years of age, who would be about this size. Um, the the girl would be two to four years of age at the time of death. And if alive today and subject to when she died, for example, if she died in 2007, the little girl would be between 10 and 12 years old today. And if she obviously died last year, she would obviously be much younger than that. So um, it's really important when members of the public are thinking about this case and who may be the victim that they keep in mind that the child could have died quite some years ago. We can't be 100% certain on the colour of the hair, except to say that from the hair we've been able to recover, that it's fair hair. In relation to the um, time of death, I can tell you that we've been examining all the labels on all the clothing that we can identify and read to try to identify where that clothing was produced, where it was sold and when. And those inquiries have taken us across the country. Some of the clothing has been identified as first having been made in 2007 and some since that time. Staining and decomposition um, of some of the marks on the clothing indicate to us that the child um, died most likely since 2007. The location of de the death remains unknown and it's still our belief that the little girl was killed elsewhere 
and her remains put into the suitcase and shifted in relatively recent times. As to what recent times means, I can tell you it's, it's at least um, back as far as March or April, but it may have been many months before that. In relation to the suitcase man, there's been sightings on the 13th of April and the 26th of May on the Karoonda Road, just west of Wanaka, carrying a suitcase. We have no idea who that person is or why he might be there, but they're credible sightings and we believe them. We again appeal to that person to come forward so that we can eliminate him from the inquiry. Um, and it's very, very unusual that nobody in the area seems to know who he is. What we need to know now is um, we want people to think back into the past, think back to 2007 and the years in between. Think about little girls like this who lived near them, played near them, they may be related to. And think about where those children are now. If you look at that little girl in that uh, suit, somebody must remember that. Somebody made that. That's not the exact brand. We've had that recreated. Um, to the same specifications of what she was wearing. It's very distinctive clothes and someone must know that little girl. We appeal to the person who emptied the suitcase to come forward. The person who emptied the suitcase has done nothing wrong. They've stopped like everybody else, curious at what they've seen, opened the suitcase and tipped it out. And it's very unlikely they would have had any idea about what the contents contained. So that person that emptied the suitcase and tipped it behind the bush contact the police immediately, go into your local police station or contact Crime Stoppers. And I'm free to take some questions. Can you definitively call <coughs> out William Shirrell? Yes. I guess in, uh, in terms of 100%, it's probably not 100% until we have the DNA, but there's absolutely nothing to indicate to us that it's William Tyrrell, and almost everything um, makes us believe it's not. The only thing remaining to exclude William Tyrrell is to have the gender confirmed as a little girl, which we expect it to be. Are there any other high-profile missing children cases that you can rule out? Certainly, we have no other high-profile or no other missing person cases, full stop, in our state that we think this little girl is. The, the, the first person to the suitcase was believed to be before March, around March, is that correct? We're not sure exactly when the person did. We know that um, about four months ago, shortly after the roadworks finished, which I'm told is between February, the work commenced and concluded in about March. Subsequent to that, a person was driving down the road, stopped to go to the toilet and saw the suitcase out of sight, partially suspended in a bush. So it had apparently been thrown into a bush. That person uh, picked up the suitcase brought it forward closer to the road and stood it up on its edge um, and left it, thinking that the person who lost it, perhaps out of a ute or off the back of a truck, would see it and come back for it. Other people have come, a procession of other people have come and they've opened the suitcase, had a look in. Somebody's obviously emptied it because some of the people that have come have found it empty, others have seen it later open. Um, some people have seen the suitcase and not seen the um, material behind the bush. Is there a chance that the bones weren't in the suitcase when the first, those first few people went through the suitcase? Could the bones have been in the suitcase later? Uh, no, we believe the bones were in the suitcase when it was sealed up and suspended behind the bush. We believe that um, most of the contents were removed from the suitcase at some point and a few items were left and then over time everything eventually came out of the suitcase. Do police believe It's, it's, it's a range of things, but it's, you know, everything points to it being a little girl. Do you feel like you are making good progress? Are there leads? How confident are you that you're going to identify this little girl was? Look, I can tell you it's really frustrating and it's difficult to be patient because we want an answer straight away, as I'm sure the community does. But I take some comfort in the fact that forensic science are working really hard and I'm sure that they will give us a result. But there's an enormous amount of work that's been undertaken by our investigators since and that's still being done. And every single day we've gone a step further in unravelling this mystery. So we're not at dead ends. The reality is we've got a massive amount of work to do and things are progressing on a daily basis. Every day we know more. So the person who emptied the 
the suitcase. Was that before or after you suspect that the man in the 60s was seen carrying a suitcase six to eight weeks ago? I mean, how do you link that? So, some of the, uh, that's why I say that we don't know if the man has any relevance to the investigation or whether he does. Um, the sooner we can identify him and talk to him, the better. Um, it's difficult for some people to be able to pinpoint exact days several months ago or even people to be sure between two and three months. Um, there are some people who can because they've been able to produce records to us and that's why we want to talk to that man and be able to eliminate him from the inquiry, inquiry as quickly as we can if he's got nothing to do with it. If it was hair in the suitcase, um, can you not get DNA from that or what's the process with that? Um, we can get DNA off of all sorts of things, but what makes it more complicated is um, the advanced state of decomposition, the fact that it is a little girl, the fact that it is small bones. There's a whole range of things. I'm not a forensic scientist or anything like that, but I know that this is an extremely difficult case, which requires a lot more work than normal, and I know that they are confident that they'll deliver a result for us in due course. Is, there, is the cause of death making it more difficult for forensic scientists? No. no. Are you saying about the cause of death? No. Is there any indication, um, considering this death might have happened several years ago potentially, and then the bones have been put into the suitcase more recently? Do you, is there the indication that the body was in the suitcase for all those years, or potentially that this child was buried? And you, is there any information on I that? I guess that the only thing I could say is that we, we believe that most of the decomposition process occurred outside of the suitcase at another location. Do you have any indication about where that location is? No. And Task Force Mali, um, is there a, a, a visible around the 